is Monday, May 16th. And she's like, yes, because it worked today. <laughs> John says, when all else fails, just turn off your computer and restart it. And I've, I've found that to be a real thing in life. When all else fails, just turn it off. All right, I want to get comments going here. There we go. I just love it that everybody from all over the world has the opportunity to be here and we can share as quilters. You know, it's funny because I've made a lot of friends along the way in the world of quilting. And uh, one is Miss Margot Claybo, who will be here in a moment, I'm sure. She is just a staunch supporter of mine and, and a dear friend, not next door. You know, she's on the other side of the country. But anyway, she was laughing at John's Facebook post about Basie Ball, specifically T-Ball. And she sent me, as we were waiting for everyone to load on, she sent me this video on my Facebook. And I'm not really good at picking up my Facebook messages. So if you want to get hold of me, I, I suggest you don't do it that way. But anyways, I if you've never been to a T-Ball game, and if you're in another country... It's, it's the kid's first introduction to baseball, baseball, and it's like four-year-olds. And the goal is to have them hit the ball off the tee, rubber thing. By the end of the season, about 60% of them can hit off of a pitched ball, but then also to run in the correct direction. That, that And I'd say my... Um, Joey didn't do baseball or t-ball, but a lot of kids do, and I see now what I miss. So I'm hoping I can get this to work. Thank you, Margo. Here we go. And that's Basie Ball. <laughs> and the really cute thing is that it is co-ed and uh, you can identify the little girls because they all have pink helmets <laughs> or they might have teal and pink gloves. I mean, it is just flipping hilarious. It's so much fun. Um, okay, so here we go. I got a um, picture from Julie, and I was so excited. I know, it is hilarious, isn't it? Oh, God. I say this before I move on. <laughs> there was somebody on the other team. They're just, they're just out rolling in the grass. I mean, picking daisies. <laughs> you know? And I loved at the end of it how the coach just picked up the kid. And went like that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Margo, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so Julie sent this, and this was one of our Sue Garmin, the late Sue Garmin's BOM that we presented on uh, thequiltshow.com. She said she just finished it. Um, it. She did her own fabric selection. Julie, it is spectacular. Just absolutely spectacular. So thank you for sending that to me. Uh, you guys know it's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at gmail.com. <clears throat> now, before we get started with today, which is pre-assembling the flowers, I want to sh show you something super fun. I believe on Wednesday I told you I was taking a um, David Owen Hastings class, and the class was to make these mini mods. This is the cover of his instructions here. Uh, we taped a show with him, and that's when I knew I wanted to take a class. In fact, I'm gonna even take another class. But um, here is my mini mod. They were supposed to be little individual um, coasters that you could like put, you know, and wrap them together with raffia and have a great gift. And I realized that this isn't gonna show as well as I'd like it to, so I want to show you what I did. 
I took, I made nine coasters and then I put them together um, kind of as quilt as you go. And you know I'm kind of into this stuff anyways, you, you, if you've been following my work, but David gave a real um, concise way to do it, very straightforward. And I want to say that he recommends that you use solid fabric so that the so sashing doesn't show very much. Um, but I don't know why. I just happen to have a lot of these grays around. <laughs> I don't know why. And and I was going to do another color. I was going to do lime green. And then I pulled out um, a drawer of fabric and it, I had a pile of shot cottons. And so I used all the shot cottons in my little strips there. And uh, we did get a bunch more in the store if you're all interested. But wow, I love those shot cottons. So I made a little video. Oh, when is his show? Um, Helen, I think it's in November. I, I don't know this, but I'm going to tell you, he's such a good teacher. And if you go, he has graphic design for a background. Um, he's very straightforward, very, very thorough. And um, you might want to check his website because he's doing teaching in person as well as a lot of virtual um, virtual classes. In fact, my little mini group, we're, he's, I believe, Seattle, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. <clears throat> and we're bringing him down and teaching our class on a uh, thing on architecture. So you might want to Google him. Um, either he's new on the scene or I have been under a rock. And I think it's number two. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Um, so what we're going to do today, I saw in the forum, one of you's like basically going to die because of all these little things you have to make. <laughs> I told you, just start singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> That's what I commission you to do. Well, I had John, um, I'm liking it when we do a pre-record with John because we can get in there and get everything better. I'm going to recap what I did with stems, but then we're going to talk about uh, putting this thing together and also the hover mode. If you don't know the hover mode on your sewing machine, uh, the Bernina has it in the higher models, and I don't know what other brands have it, you are missing the boat. So here we go. Let's take a look-see at what John and I put down, put down, put down for you. So probably at this point, you've got a bazillion of these petals for your flower. And it's either a half daisy or a cone flower, depending on where you live. And so I like for the vertical rows in the bars to mix up both the grays and the topes. So this is what I do. We're gonna prepare these flowers before they ever get stitched onto the quilt. So it's much easier to handle. I just take my trusty little glue stick and I go like this, trying to keep my hand out of the way, like this, and then maybe, okay, so I like this and this, then I'm gonna go like this. And honestly, it doesn't matter which is on top of which, you can reverse the direction and it's no big deal. So there it is, as cute as it gets. Then I'm gonna take its nose, or someone called it gumdrop, which I thought that was adorable. Oh, and I'm gonna glue it on top. But note how you've got all of this excess in here. We will cut that away when we're done. So don't worry about it now. You didn't have to do the point, yippee for that. And so now I'm gonna go like this, and I'm going to put this on top. And the whole thing is held together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all these little parts down, but not worry about the outside edge. So let's go back to our sewing machine. I am working on a Bernina 765 if you're new to the game. What you're gonna do, I'll also after I show you how to do the stitch, because I've already shown you how to do it with the straight lines, I'm gonna show you the hover mode. And if you don't know where the hover mode is on your machine, it's kind of life-changing. So I go here to this icon, and right here is the blanket stitch. I'm gonna hit that. I want this blanket stitch to ride all the way to the right. It is going to be just inside of my number 20 foot on the inside, so it helps me align it. I am going to 
change it so that it is about a 1.0 here, and that's width, and then length, I'm going to go, whoops, the wrong way, maybe to about a 3.15, 3.20, it doesn't matter. Remember, this is finished applique, and I kept saying that when we were doing the bars, but this is finished applique. So now I've got this one set. Now this one is going to become a little bit different. I am going to move it all the way to the right before I used it as a stop start. Now I want to use it as a regular stitch. So I'm going to take it, oh, whoops, down to, should, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to take this to a 2.00, or no, 2.50, I'm sorry, kind of what your default is. And you'll see, I'm going to toggle between these two stitches. These two stitches will stay until you turn your sewing machine off. You can often put, a lot of people put it in the heart. That's like their little filing cabinet where they can put their favorite things. At night, I just chose to go to the ecology mode. And then when I wake up in the morning, I go like that and it's still all there. But now let's talk about the hover mode. I love the hover mode. And in fact, I bought my first Bernina because of the free hand system, which we call the knee lift. But when I discovered this, this was kind of a game changer for me because I didn't have to use the knee lift that much. Get a pencil, it's kind of hidden, but once you change it on your machine, if you turn off the machine, it will stay because you are in the factory settings. That's the difference between altering a stitch and changing your machine. So you're going to hit the gears, and then you're going to go here. Um, also, we'll call this the straight stitch zigzag, all right? Now, then you're gonna go to this chimney. You might wanna watch this a couple times because this is really fabulous. And then you're gonna go over here where the needle is penetrated down into the cloth. I, I don't understand the icons, but this is what you do. Now, this, it comes out of the box with it so that when you go down, the presser foot stays taunt against your fabric. Well, I like it in the middle one so that when I go down with the needle and stop, the presser foot comes up a little bit. You can even have it come up more for the third setting, but I like this setting. Now, one other caveat, when you're using um, the function to have it raise up a little bit, your needle has to be in the down position. If the needle is not in the down position, it will just act like usual. So you don't have to go back and change your factory setting if you want the needle, if you want that function to not work, but I want it to work so it's needle down. So let's go over and start sewing and I'll show you what I mean. For what we're doing now, because you've got different colors, you've got the taupes and the gray, I would probably use the clear monopoly thread it will disappear in the end. Of course, Monopoly comes in clear and it comes in smoke, and this is a Quilter Select product, but I would probably use the clear, the lightweight, clear Monopoly. In my bobbin, as I've told you over and over, I love my number 80 weight. Quilter Select, it's a polyester, it's very fine. Now, in this demo, I'm gonna be using black thread on top so you can see what the heck is going on, all right? So I'm gonna go over to, right in here, I'll have John get in here and I'll keep my hand all the way. And I am going to just start stitching my blanket stitch that has been, de been defaulted. And see how I'm running along the inside, right here is where the blanket stitch is. Okay, look, look how that little foot just magically came up. One, two, stop. See, loving on that. And yes, I could use my knee lift, but this is so much easier. Now I'm gonna come down this way. Come up, beautiful. So now 
I want to come back down exactly where I was. So I'm going to go back over here to the screen and I'm going to push this middle button that I have fiddled with. All right. I'm, I'm going back and forth. I'm going to sew right along the edge of that finished applique. Oh, I love how that pops up. And then I'm going to go back to my blanket stitch. Whoops, I missed it. There we go. And whenever you have to go around a corner, like right here, it's starting to turn, I always make sure I'm on the outside of the shape. Okay. Love that function beyond end. It, I mean, it's, I bought a Bernina because of the knee lift, but this is just one more added feature. If you enjoy the knee lift and your machine has this, it's worth learning about. So now I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go back to that one little stitch that's riding right on the inside there at a 2.50. Okay, go back to my blanket. Oh shoot, I got off the edge, that's okay. Pivot. Now remember, if I don't want it to come up for whatever reason, I just take the needle position. Oh, look at that. That is really gross. But see, if you had a monopoly there, it wouldn't show a clear. <laughs> oh, whoops, I forgot to change this too because that got me all shook up. There's a lot of forgiveness when you use a clear monopoly. And one last bit to go. Okay, pivot, go to the outside. I might take a little back stitch. Cut it. Let's take a look. So right here now, this thing is ready to go on the quilt. And the only real screw up is right in there. It will not show with the monopoly. Absolutely not. But I'm preparing the flower to get ready to go on the quilt. If you were doing this petal by petal by petal by petal by center, you would be crying by the time the quilt is over. So you've got your work cut out for you. And um, I wanna talk about, I talked about how you did the centers with the different colors. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the outside and what you might wanna do next live. Okay, so um, it really is easy. And um, I'm wondering, Sherry, if those Monopoly tips um, work for you. I mean, it's just like you're using any other thread on top, all right? And then uh, Mary Lynn said her Juki has hover mode. So I don't know which machines have it and which don't, but it's worth Googling and figuring it out. And if you've got a Bernina, that's a higher end, excuse me, so rude. Um, it, it's, it's the perfect thing to do. Uh, it, it's the perfect thing to use. Now I wanna show you here, uh, I said that we were gonna cut it out. And then of course I didn't, but if you do the flower all the way around, it gets really bulky in here. And so I just literally got in there and cut it out. Just go ahead and cut it out. And there you go. And then it's much more manageable. All right. Now, um, I got, Susan uh, sent me a picture of her flowers on her border. And I'm super excited that you did because she she marked, a, uh, I think it's a half an inch from each edge of the border. And she said, boy, that seems really tight for those flowers. Yes, it is tight because they're not overlapped. So overlap them and then they will be fine. Um, the great thing about uh, um, applique is there's so much forgiveness in it. Okay, why is John in here? What's the question? You can ask him about monopoly and the bobbin. Oh, I don't think you don't want that. I, you know what, Monopoly and the bobbin, I don't think I would do that. I just don't think I would do it. I haven't done it, but it's, it's a squirrely, 
it's a squirrely thing to work with. So again, I use my 80 weight in my bobbin. And if you don't have it, use your 50 weight or whatever, but I don't think I would do that. Okay. Okay. So Viking has it. Yes. Okay. Brother has it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we've got these, we've got, here, I'm going to look back down on here. It's just a little convoluted to find on my Bernina. All right. So let's look at this. By the way, I took the pins out of blocking it on Friday and I didn't even need to press it. I just let it hang there and it was fine. Okay. So these ones you're going to want to do the half domes is what we're going to call them, right? And these are mixed, mixed gray and uh, beiges. On the pattern, this is a trick that I do all the time, is I asymmetrically change color on the border. So up here, I'm transitioning from neutrals down to here where I'm transitioning from grays. And rather than make it an abrupt transition, I start doing flowers that have both the gray and the beige, all right? You can see right there. And then that helps transition the color and it's not so stark. It's a little trick I use all the time. But talk about another little trick. I was trying to figure out how many, um, how many of these you needed to make, and I would go to the quilt, and then I would go to the instructions, and I go to the quilt, and I go to the instructions. And I realize that on the instructions, it's not beautifully illustrated in the corner. And we'll be talking about that in one of the next lessons. But basically, on the top, there's one, two, three, four, five flowers. This is a corner. This is a corner. And on the side, there's one, two, three, four, five, six flowers. So you would sew on the inner border, and then you would sew this on, not all the way, and you would sew this on, and then this creates the overlap at the top. This, this is this. And you'll note here that the corner flower, this is where the deception comes in, is actually this one. And so it would not be down like that. It would not be down. It would be, you wouldn't even have it sewn on yet. So hold on before you do the borders, if this is confusing to you, because I got to tell you, I looked at it, I'm going, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Because essentially this should not, this and this, this and this should not be sewn on yet. All right. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, let's see. Okay, Foff does too. Okay. Um, you know, Susan, if you don't have enough grace, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter at all, all right? Uh, and I hope that answers your question because when I looked at it, I thought, what the heck is going on? Why, why is it so extended out? And then I realized they weren't overlapped. And so that's what, what you did is exceedingly, um, normal. Uh, the other thing is, I don't know, Susan, if you got the kit from us, but I recognize that one fabric, you might want to go the little diamond one. You might want to go and check out at your local quilt shop if they have a couple really lightweight grays, because otherwise the gray vine might be a little too strong. But I think you got that from us, that kit. And so there's there's enough grays in there, I believe, but you might want to add more. More is always better. Okay, do I have monopoly in the bobbin? No, Carol, I do not have monopoly in the bobbin. I've never done that. Um, I don't know why. So I just, I, I just, I wouldn't. Okay, can you clarify, should we sew the bias on the outside border? Don't worry about that yet now. You've got to sew a bunch of flowers together. I was just, I was just thinking a lot of you are kind of getting ahead, and I guess that was confusing to throw that in, but when you start counting flowers and how many you need to make, I felt that the pattern was a little deceptive, okay? So don't sew them on. You'll have plenty of work to do this week. <laughs> making all those flower bundles, I guarantee you. Okay. Um, 
It is uh, Monday. I'm going to work some more on my David quilt. I've got another thing I'm working on, and I'm really excited because in an hour, I'm going to be uh, recording with Libby Williamson. She's my faces girl, and she is she is a teacher that I would take no matter what, no matter where, just like David. So I'm very excited to be uh, interviewing her, catching up with her, because hers is the next show that's going to be airing, and one of the segments is um, Faces, Our Faces. Uh, she helped me solve How to Finish Mine that I took in her class. She also had an extraordinary quilt that I'm hoping we can talk about. I think it was made for Visions or um, the Dairy Barn and their strict rules. And it was perhaps, it's a quilt that haunts me because it's really different. I mean, really different. So, okay, people. Um, yeah, so use the hover mode. Go hover mode. Um, David's website is, it's probably, it's David Owens. Well, his website is david at davidowenshastings.com. No, that's his email. Don't don't email him. <laughs> Go to his website. www.davidowenhastings.com. That's where you want to go. So, he lives up in Squim, Washington. Have a good day, and I will see you Wednesday. Bye-bye.